Welcome to another episode of Rome Over Landing. We're busy recharging this morning for an adventurous day in the Bavajanskloof. Today I'm actually going to be getting behind the wheel of the 79 series Bushtech Cruiser. I'm very excited. My first time driving a Land Cruiser, so that should be a bundle of fun. And um, going to have a bit more of a first-hand experience of using the tray that Rulfi and Haley have been using over the past two days. And uh, they'll get a bit of time behind the Rome Hilux there as well. So, should be fun. Join us. After a long day on the road yesterday, and with only a short drive ahead of us today, it gave us time to take it easy in the morning and get a good breakfast going while we slowly packed up our camp. Our journey today would take us deeper into the beautiful Bavianskloof. We had planned to stop at the wild fig tree forest at Silverfontein before making our way to our campsite at Doerenkloof. But today would be my first day behind the wheel of the cruiser, so this should be fun. This whole series is made possible by the power of Red Ark and in part by Bush Tech Canopies, Terrain Tamer, and Easy On. So my turn. Your turn. And my turn with Rome 1. Yeah. <laughs> the first time I'm getting Rome 1 actually. You used to rallying this. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't try the same in that. No, I don't think so. It'll handle everything. I mean, it'll do 100 on these roads, but your stopping is the the problem. The problem. Compared to what you used to with the big brake kit. It's a map cruiser with the standard touch, so... Yeah, that's okay. But uh, you say the exhaust pipe is quite addictive, so I need to just be that's careful. That's the problem. I need to be careful of that, because uh, <laughs> I do suffer with a little bit of sensitivity to a nice sounding engine. It's yeah. uh, genetic. This rumble of a V8 is, uh... <laughs> it's quite something. Just coming back into the highlights, it's already feeling like this is more sporty and like more nimble and agile. What you're driving there is like a, you gotta have it, the mindset of driving a truck. Yo! <laughs> Are you finding the, the manual gearbox again? It's really nice driving a manual that's got power. Oh my word, where are the brakes? My god, there are no brakes on this thing. Like, holy oh, really shit, they stopped. You're not joking when you said you, you stop braking from a kilometer away. And they're hard though. As Rufi and I continue to nerd out about the cruiser and the Hilux, the magnificent scenery of the Bavian's curve just started getting better and better. We even found a few of our locust friends again. It's a bit noisy in here though. Apparently a place that does um, roaster cook here that is highly recommended. So Andy and I'll have to have them and tell you guys what it's like. No, but if it's an experience like that, the, the diet will have to wait. <laughs> well, uh, the Tani at the camping site we just had highly recommended it. She says it's fantastic. It uh, should not be too far from here, but we're a bit early for a lunch stop. So I know we just had breakfast, but we were recommended by the farm owners at Eight Spun to come and stop here at Vero's restaurant. And it is such a quaint little spot. They're locals, they live in the Bavians Kloof. They've got this beautiful garden here in the valley, surrounded by aloes and rocks and everything. Stunning spot. And they do homemade rooster cooks, some tea, some coffee, very basic things. But 
You know what? Our drive today is short. We're gonna stop, we're gonna enjoy the little spots along the way. There's a wild fig tree forest that we're gonna go and visit um, a little bit later on. And, um, you know, we're just gonna take it easy and see what the Barbianskloof is all about. But so far, so good. For those that don't know, a roosterkoek is basically a little bread roll baked directly over the fire. It's typically served with jams, mince and cheese, or in our case, nice and simple with a cheese, ham, and tomato. It's a delightful South African delicacy and can be found all across the country in many unique ways. After our little pit stop, we came through a little pass and began to descend some truly spectacular scenery. The Bavian's Kloof is unique. It hosts many varieties of biospheres, and as you drive and change altitude through the mountain passes, so the vegetation changes with it. But it's definitely the mountains and the rock formations that make the scenery so unique. You can see that in the wet season, most of the river crossings would be completely flooded. The Balveans is famous for the incredible amount of water crossings. But fortunately or unfortunately for us, there wasn't all that much water for us to play in. I'm prepared to have dust in my teeth just to put my head next to the exhaust. <laughs> Do you see how, when this is rainy season, how much water you've got? Yeah, plenty, plenty. I hope there's still some left for us. I'd be very disappointed, actually, if there was no more water for us. What it lacked in water, it made up for in bucket loads, with some of the most insane geological features I've ever seen. Ten meter deep inside the ground. This was shiver from time. Forty-nine thousand five hundred. Our stop at Sierra Fontaine was a breath of fresh air. Our host Patrick was a burst of passion and humor, and he put a serious show on for us. We started at the fountain, enjoying pure, clean mountain water, which we filled up all of our bottles before taking a short drive to the wild fig tree forest. It was a lovely experience and Patrick is so proud to share the stories of his land. This area has got such a rich history, it's uh, you know, awesome to have a little slice of that and you know, get to learn a little bit about it. It's a beautiful place. <laughs> We got lucky and found one last splishy splashy for the day, and we had to christen the vehicles with their first mud bath of the trip. Rolfie even christened the new rooftop tent on the Hilux with that one. But this really was one of those days where you truly feel fulfilled, cruising through jaw-dropping scenery all day, tasting the flavors and the purity of the Barbians Kloof, and now we would arrive at our next campsite and get ready to kick back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the afternoon. All we had to do now 
or set up our home away from home. You know what they say, home is where you park it. Just need a cold one. Unfortunately, it's not a beer. Wow. I won't tell it to you guys how we We're not necessarily at the camp we intended to be at tonight. Um, we are at Dorenkloof, but we had initially expected to be at the Bosrug bush camp. But uh, they had not really gotten it ready for us. I think they sort of forgot about us. But we have made ourselves very comfortable here. We've got a nice big campsite. We've got grass lawns. We've got a nice little fire pit and stuff over there. And we are not going to be sickling tonight. We've got nice level ground. We set up. I just need to set up my rooftop tent and get ready for the evening. We're going to make a nice big fire, cook a nice meal, have another beautiful evening in the Baviaanskloof. But yeah, today was really nice. Really beautiful to experience. Nice to see how close the local community is to the tourism industry within Baviaanskloof. And that whatever you go, wherever you go and, and support a, a business or a campsite or a restaurant or a little pot stall in the Baviaanskloof, you are directly supporting the local community. And that is very, very cool. So I must say, that's very nice. I'm, I'm keen to see what, we've got a clear sky tonight, so hopefully we can see some beautiful stars. Um, we have had full moon in that, so it's been really nice to light up the campsite at night, even though we can't see the Milky Way and all of that. But it's been really, really nice. Tomorrow morning, I'm hoping we can go and do a little bit of a four by four trail, get into the mountains a little bit more, get off the, you know, the get off the beaten track a little bit and go exploring before we make our way to our next campsite but for now let's settle down at camp make a fire get some food going and enjoy the rest of the evening we really are blessed to be able to have such amazing vehicles to take with us on these adventures we really do get to live in luxury out on these trips because of these rigs This is it. It can't get much more perfect than this. Sitting around a roaring fire, cooking an amazing meal with fantastic company, even the Milky Way popped out for us a bit. Today was another fantastic adventure. Thank you so much for joining us on this week's episode of Rome Overlanding. I really hope you enjoyed it and would love to hear what you think down in the comments below. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. It really helps the channel and I will see you on the next adventure. Cheers.